To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that I shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. Defining a leader. What is leadership? Let us look at some of the definitions given by leadership gurus. There are few definitions of leadership by anonymous leadership gurus, such as leadership is an art of influencing people or getting things done through people. A leader is a man who knows the road, who can keep ahead and who can pull others after him. A Christian leader is someone gifted and called out by God to be a servant, guiding towards Christian ideals and equipping them for ministry. Mary Frances Johnson Preston quoted, True Christian leadership is investing one's life in guiding a group towards worthy Christian ideals and accomplishment. Ted Anstrom quoted, one who guides activities of others and who himself acts and performs to bring those activities about. Welton Crossland quoted, A leader is one who guides his followers towards desire ends. Outwear Tech quoted, Leadership is the activity of influencing people to cooperate towards some goal which they come to find Desirable. Peter Vichalot quoted, Leadership is an art of combing ideas, people, things, time, leadership, and faith to achieve predetermined objectives. James Hunter quoted, The skills of influencing people to enthusiastically work toward goals identified as being for the common good if character that inspires confidence. Maya Monroe quoted, Leadership is a capacity to influence others through inspiration generated by passion, motivated by vision, birthed from a conviction produced by a purpose. From the above definitions, leadership can be summarized in one word, influence. Leadership has to do with the ability to influence or to lead others. Without that quality, that person cannot be legitimately called or claimed to be a leader. The stronger the influence, the greater the leadership. The weaker the leadership, the weaker the influence. We need a more comprehensive view that is informed by Scripture, not limited to the book of Nehemiah, but shaped by biblical values and applicable to current situations. It is my conviction that biblical models of leadership are timeless, for today's leaders. That means that any definition of leadership needs to maintain a biblical and practical equilibrium in our view. And excellent definitions of leadership is given by our late Reverend Dr. Anthony Yeo in his doctorate dissertations entitled Pastoral Leadership, Ramifications of Rehimaya Chapter 1 to Chapter 6 for Singapore context. And this is what he quoted. A leader is a spirit and power servant with a sense of des destiny backed by a call from God to use his or her God-given ability and responsibility to influence others towards God's purposes for the good of the followers and the glory of God. Let us unpack the definitions. They all started with the capital letter P. The first P, the person. Leadership begins with a person and not a committee. To do God's work effectively and lead the people, divine empowerment from above is sin qua non. It means without which there is nothing. Anyone who has read the scripture would not deny this. 
Notice that a leader is a servant. He or she is one who serves rather than rules. It is not easy to be a servant. There is a difference between a secular and a spiritual leadership. The former puts more premium on charisma than character, ability more than availability, doing more than being, ruling more than serving, methods more than metamorphosis, and human empowerment more than divine empowerment. Whereas the latter emphasizes more on the latter, though it recognizes the need for equilibrium between the two. The second P, the power. Serving the Lord requires a power or unctions of the Holy Spirit. Genuine leaders depends on the unction or anointing of the Holy Spirit to do their task. It is presumptuous to serve without divine empowerment. In the Old Testament, we find expressions like the Spirit of the Lord coming upon certain individuals who were craftsmen, judges, leaders, and prophets. They include Bessele, Moses, Joshua, O'Neill, Gideon, Jasper, Samson, David, Saul, 70 elders, Balaam, messengers of Saul, Amasa, Asarash, Zechariah, Isaiah, and Ezekiel. Consecration leaders like the prophets, priests, and kings in the Old Testament was done through anointing with oil, a power simple, divine and power. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. From that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. The unction or anointing of the Holy Spirit is so important in David's ministry. In his lowest period, he prayed, Do not banish me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Jerobabel, who oversaw the rebuilding of the Jerusalem temple, was told the secret of accomplishment of the project by Prophet Zechariah when he told him, It is not by force nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Elijah, the prophet who succeeded Elijah, prayed for double portion of Elijah's spirit. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. And Elisha replied, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. You can see in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. This integrity integri relationship between the work of the Holy Spirit and leadership must be overemphasized. In the four Gospels, we read about the empowerment of Jesus Christ and his baptism. The Holy Spirit descended upon him. Later, he was led into wilderness to be tempted and armed with the power of the Holy Spirit. He returned to Galilee, where he began his ministry. He entered the synagogue in Nazareth, and read open the scroll of Isaiah and read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. We find in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. His preaching and deliverance ministry were in the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter summed it best, the ministry of Jesus, when he declared, You know, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with power. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. In the New Testament, the word power and Holy Spirit often go together. When you find the word power, you will also find the person of the Holy Spirit when the context is about preaching. It seems clear from the scripture that without the work of the Holy Spirit, there can be no conviction of sin conversion of sinners or consecration of the sins. It was Jesus who said, It is a spirit that gives life. 
flesh can achieve nothing. John chapter 6, verse 33. Even Jesus himself needed power to minister effectively to others. Yes, a leader who seeks to lead and serve the people need divine empowerment to accomplish his or her task. Interestingly, we have heard of projects being abandoned because of lack of funds or unsuccessful bids. But we do not hear of projects being abandoned because there is no divine favour from God. The programme is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.